Amen and amen and amen. So we're just going to speak very briefly about the call for revival. And then we'll spend some time praying um, so that um, God will move mightily in our midst during the revival um, come Thursday. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Um, so the call for revival, I mean, revival is at different levels. There is a need for revival sometimes over a nation. And sometimes the call of revival is over individuals, or it could be over a family. It could be over a particular church. I mean, I have been a part of a church so many years ago that I had a witness within me that indeed this church needs a form of revival. I was listening to a pastor preach, and he said last year was perhaps one of the most difficult years um, that he experienced in ministry, mainly because they had gotten into a rut, you know, they had, they had perfected the process of service. So they will come for service. Everything worked like clockwork. Everybody knew what he or she was required to do in the service. So, I mean, they had become carnal and physical oriented when it comes to service. And he said the Lord convicted him. And he realized that there was a need for a change. You know, although the crowd was there in church, you know, um, lives were being impacted. But there was something that was lacking, something supernatural. And, and, and I listened intently to him because there were a lot of things that I had to learn myself from that particular message. Because, you see, it's possible for us to get into the motion, you know, uh, as we mature as believers, it's possible for us to just perfect the process, you know. And, and when we get into that process, sometimes our, our worship and our adoration and our service to God may be coming from a shallow place and not from a deep place. Uh, our intimacy and our relationship with the Lord could somewhat be compromised because we have gotten familiar with the process. And whenever you get into that kind of situation, there is a need for revival. Because the God we serve is a God that searches the hearts and the reins. God is not a God that is moved by actions. It's not a God that is moved by the outward appearance. What is moved by is what is in the heart, the, the, the reason why we do what we do, the, the depth of our worship, the depth of our relationship. That is what really matters to God. So, I mean, in my life, I always do an assessment and constantly check if there is a need for revival in any area of my life. And I would like to encourage every believer to make sure that you spend time on a regular periodic basis to check different areas of your life to know which area requires revival. And when we talk about revival, it's not just physical things. And even as I'm speaking to you, I am also checking myself. You know, it's not just about spiritual things. It's also about physical things. Sometimes your marriage may need a romantic revival. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, and we are all just as guilty. Because after a while, you get familiar and you get used to your spouse. You know every aspect. You know what that person will do in different situations. And there's a tendency for the marital relationship to go into a standardized process that may lack flavor and fire. Sometimes your career may need a revival. I was speaking to somebody, um, I think two weeks ago, you know, this person had a great job with a multinational organization, you know, and she was getting paid a whole lot of money. 
but, but somebody said to me that every time I send a mail, every time I make a call to this person, I don't get a response. You know, on the surface, the person appeared to be okay, you know, but inside that person, the person had gotten too familiar and too comfortable and was no longer challenged and did not get satisfaction from the job, you know, and she had to look for a career revival. She had to find a role, you know, in an organization that challenged her. You know, so we need to constantly do an evaluation of different areas of our life and determine, you know, what aspect of our life requires revival. You know, there are some things that you, that are more or less like telltale signs that will make you realize that, mm, I need to trigger a revival in this area, particularly in your work with the Lord. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4 Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4 says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. It says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4. Whenever you find out that the initial passion, the initial drive, the initial zest, the initial momentum that you had for something is beginning to wane, that is one of the major signs that there's a need to trigger a revival in that area. You know, if you find out that your love for the Lord is not as it used to be, you are not happy coming into the presence of the Lord. You don't look forward to studying his word or, or talking about Christian things. You know, you find out that you don't have a desire for the things of God. That means that there is a need for a revival in your work with the Lord. If you find out that you don't like going to work, you are not looking forward to, you know, driving your business, that means there is a need for a revival in your career and your business, you find out that you are not looking forward to spending time with your spouse, you know, or spending time with a particular friend. That means there's a need for a revival in that relationship. Another pointer to a need for revival is found in Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2. Isaiah 59 and verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. When you find out that in a church, sin has become prevalent, there's a need for a revival in that church. When you find out in a family, in a relationship, sin has become prevalent, then there's a need for revival. Because sin is a byproduct of corruption. When a heart is corrupted, it will tend towards sin. Whenever the enemy, you know, wants to set a person up for destruction, it will push that person more and more towards sin. So whenever you find out that your thoughts, your actions, your words are constantly tending towards sin, you know, even though you are speaking in tongues, even though you are a worker, even though you are a pastor, a minister, no matter what, it, what position you occupy, the moment you find that your heart is always tending towards sin, then that is a signal that you need a revival. Because the flies will always come onto any surface that is cold. But when the surface is hot and is on fire, the bells above flies will find it difficult to perch on such a surface. You know, so outward activities can sometimes cloud our judgment and make us feel that we are in the right standing. But when you find out that sin is prevalent, that means there's a need for revival. Something is getting cold. And there's a need, that, 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 that there are a few things that make it very important for us to revive ourselves on time 
so that the enemy will not gain access to our lives. You know, when the saints of God are forgotten who they are and what they carry, it is a sign that there's a need for a revival. Second Kings chapter 17 and verse 38. Second Kings 17 and verse 38. The Bible says, And the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget. Neither shall you fear other gods. So the moment that you, you, you realize that you don't remember the promises of God, you are easily overwhelmed by fear and anxiety. You don't remember the scriptures. You want to pray and you can't find any scripture to back up your prayers with. You find out that you are constantly afraid. Oh, you're afraid that you're going to lose your job. You're afraid that your marriage is going to fail. You're afraid about your children. You're afraid about different things. You are just constantly overwhelmed with fear. It is a sign that you need a revival. The Bible says that the wicked run, they flee when no one is chasing them. But the righteous... They are as bold as a lion. I remember some time, some years ago, in the university, we had spent so much time in the place of prayers and intercession, you know, that we became so bold and confident to go anywhere. They said, oh, there are courts here. We are not afraid to go there, you know, to evangelize, even to lecture us. Why? Because... With the fire of God was burning. One of the telltale signs of a life that is on fire for God is boldness and courage. And one of the signs of a life that needs the fire of revival is when that person has forgotten who he or she is in Christ and is constantly overwhelmed by fear. There's a level that you can be on fire for the Lord that you can pray to that you are not even afraid of tomorrow. You are not afraid of your career. You are not afraid of your business. You are not afraid of your children. You are not afraid for your children. You are not afraid for your marriage because you know that you have spent time in the fire of revival and the Lord is there with you. Praise the name of the Lord. My prayer for every one of us is that God will ignite the fire of revival in our midst tonight in the name of Jesus. And God will use our crusade on Thursday to bring about a massive turnaround in our lives in the name of Jesus. So it's the covenant I have made with you, you will not forget. Neither will you be afraid. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you fill our hearts with confidence and boldness to know that, yes, indeed, you are with us. And help us, O God, to remember your promises so that we will not be afraid. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 9, Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood. And the city full of perverseness. For they say, the Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. There is a need for revival. The moment there is iniquity, the moment there is injustice, the moment people feel that they are no more accountable. You know, the problem that Lucifer had was that he felt that there was no need for him to be accountable to the Godhead. And his heart rose up within him. And it was the beginning of his fall. If he had paid attention to that trigger for revival and he had revived his consecration and his submission to the Lord, he would not have fallen. Whenever you find out that you believe that you don't need to be accountable whenever you find out that you have become proud and arrogant that means something is wrong and there's a need for a spiritual revival 
particularly as you grow in the Lord, as a pastor, as a minister, as a worker, the moment you find yourself being isolated and you don't want to be accountable to anybody, and I've seen this happen in so many lives, you know, you see somebody coming frequently to church, attending prayer meetings, you know, and all of a sudden you don't see the person anymore. And then we start calling and trying to find out. And when you eventually get across the person, you say, oh, I want to be alone. I want to uh, spend some time with the Lord. Uh, I'm tired of coming to church. Uh, I would rather just stay at home and watch, you know, service online and all that. All that is an indication that something is wrong with the fire of revival. Jesus Christ says, the, the zeal of your house has consumed me. One of the telltale signs of a life that is on fire for the Lord is a desire for the presence of the Lord, for fellowship with the brethren. It says, forsake ye not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. It says, we are supposed to desire to be together. When you find out that you want to be isolated, you want to be alone, you are tired of coming to church. It's Sunday morning, you don't want to come to church. You know, it's, uh, it's time to uh, attend the prayer meeting, you don't want to go. That is a sign that something is happening to the fire that is within you. And you need to make an extra effort to revive it. Because the realm of the spirit is very sensitive to time. Whatever you discern on time and you address it will stop a lot of evil from happening in the future. But whatever you don't discern on time, whatever the enemy tries to sneak things into our lives and allow it to become established, to become a stronghold. It comes in like a foothold and the enemy wants to expand it and make it into a stronghold you know, that becomes a problem. That is why it's important to constantly do an assessment. Lord, why is it that I don't want to spend time in your presence? Not only in the midst of the congregation of the saints, but even in your private closet. That is because there is something wrong with the fire. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. It says, Matthew 24 and verse 12 says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, the signs of the end time. When the love for the Lord is waxing cold and cold and cold, there is a need for revival. Discern it quickly. And address it. First Samuel chapter three and verse one. First Samuel chapter three and verse one says, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. And the Bible says, Now in those days messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. When the message from the Lord and the word of the Lord is scarce. The KJV version uses precious, but that is, it means scarce. Very rare. And visions and supernatural things have become, un have become uncommon. That means there is a need for revival. If you go to a church, and in that church, you can't learn anything from the pulpit. There's nothing that inspires you, nothing that encourages you, nothing that, you know, will make you a better believer, that means there's a need for a revival in that church. When supernatural things are very rare and uncommon, there's a need for revival. In my own personal life, if I find out that there is not enough manifestation of the supernatural in my work with the Lord and the ministry, I do a check to see whether there is a need to trigger a revival. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So some of the dangers of not allowing the fire of revival to be kindled and to burn is that when that revival is not there, 
and you allow it to stay in that state for too long, sooner or later, the enemy will attack. Because flies will only perch on a cold surface. If you allow all these signs to manifest, you find out that you don't want to come to church, your love for the Lord has gone cold, you know, you are afraid of everything and anything, you have forgotten the promises of God, you have forgotten some of the scriptures that you memorized as a young believer, you know, you find out that sin is constantly plaguing you, and you find out your first love has gone away, if you leave yourself in that situation for too long, these are the things that happen. The first thing that typically happens is that the enemy will attack. And, and, and in, in my personal life and my relationship with a number of people, whenever I see these signs in the life of a person, I, I begin to speak with the person that you need to trigger the fire of revival because if you allow yourself in this state for long enough, sooner or later, Beelzebub, the prince of the flies, will perch on an area of your life and attack. You need to keep the fire of revival constantly burning in your life so that you can be immune to demonic activity. If you continue in this state, you start having evil dreams. You start coming under attack. You start experiencing, it's possible to start experiencing misfortune. It's possible to start, you know, experiencing, you know, the demonic activities. Why? Because the fire of revival has gone down. And the person has become cold and attractive to the enemy. When the fire of revival has gone down and you have left it in that state for so long, breakthroughs become delayed. Because for you to get your breakthrough, you need to resist the enemy. You need to push the enemy out of the way. So if you see all these stealthy signs, these seven signs I have listed, and you notice they are in your life and you are not doing anything about it, what happens is that the breakthroughs that require spiritual fire become delayed. And that person will continue pushing and pushing and pushing. But the substance and the power required for the breakthrough is not there. When the fire of revival is not burning and a person is in a cold state, it can lead to the loss of salvation and eternal damnation. Eternal damnation happens when salvation is lost. I was reading a book by Kenneth Hagin, and in that book he said, the Lord showed him a vision of the wife of a minister. And he said, the enemy came to her mind and said to her, you are a born-again Christian, you are in this church, but in essence you are a beauty queen. You are very beautiful. By being in church and wearing all these drabby clothes, you know, and not being fashionable, you are missing out on a lot of wonderful things that are present in the world. He said, when that demonic spirit spoke that thing to the heart of that woman, he said it was like a dot. He said the woman in the vision, said the woman became transparent, and that suggestion was like a dot in her head. He said the moment the woman accepted that thought, and started to meditate on it, said that dot started to grow and to expand gradually. And she said, as the woman continued to think about it, and the moment she started to feel bad, that, ah, that is true. If I were in the world, I would have the best clothes, I would have the best men, I would have the best, and she started feeling bad. He said, that dot that became big, started to move from her head towards her heart. And he said, the moment the woman got angry, I was now misbehaving and, you know, did not want to come to church, was just, you know, upset. And, you know, they were wondering what's wrong with this woman. I said, that thing had become established in her heart and had become a black mass. And he said, gradually, the woman started moving away from church. And in no time at all, she had gone back into the world into the fashion lane. 
and she renounced her salvation. This is what happens when you detect that the fire of revival is not burning and you don't do anything about it and you allow it to fester and to remain in that state for a long time, it results in the loss of salvation. It's not everybody that comes to church that is speaking in tongue that is saved. Some people, the relationship with the Lord is non-existent. There are sometimes when you, you are part of a disciplinary committee, and when you assess what a person has done, you know that this person is no longer born again, even though he or she is coming consistently to church, but that relationship with God is gone. And once that relationship with God is gone, there's no fear of the Lord, there's no accountability to God, there's no love for the Lord, the essence of salvation is lost. And a lot of people try to substitute that with regular attendance in services and working hard for the Lord. But that is not what God desires. He wants a life that is committed to him. So if you don't want to lose your salvation and experience eternal damnation, you need to pick up on any of these seven signs very quickly. And the moment you pick it up, you need to address it. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. If you allow the fire of revival to remain low, and you don't trigger you know, the burning fire of the Lord, it results in carnality and worldliness. All of a sudden, the pull of the world becomes very strong and irresistible. The desire of the flesh becomes very strong because there is no fire of revival. That is when you save up money, you know, money that can be used for the gospel, you save it up, to buy very expensive and non-value adding things of the world. That's when you desire to buy a scarf for hundreds of thousands of naira because there is a logo on it. That is when your mind is constantly thinking and planning and scheming about how to acquire the fashion of this world, the trends of this world, it consumes you. There's nothing wrong with, you know, buying good quality things, but it should not be priority. It should not be a consuming factor in a person's life. When the fire of revival is not burning, you find out that your heart is gradually tending towards the world and the flesh. And one of the major signs is prayerlessness. You know, you find that you don't want to pray. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So let's round up as we spend some time praying for our crusade-themed revive. How do you stir up the fire of revival? If you notice all of a sudden that these seven signs are beginning to manifest in your life, you realize that the love that you have for the Lord or the love you have for your spouse, you know, or the love you have for your job is beginning to wane. When you find out that sin has become prevalent, when you find out that you have forgotten the promises of the Lord, you know, and you are constantly afraid and worried about everything, you have a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, and F, you know, when you find out, you know, that your love for the Lord has gone cold, what do you do to trigger the fire of revival? The first thing you need to do is to repent in humility. There is always something that triggers that situation. There's always something that is drawing the power and the fuel out of the fire of revival. You need to discern what that thing is. And it could be anything. Some people have lost the fire of revival because they got into a relationship. Some people have lost the fire of revival because they picked up a habit Find out whatever it is that compromised you sincerely and in humility and go before the Lord to repent. That is why as believers, we have to constantly do a check. 
I always do a check. If I engage with a person, I try to assess what is the effect, what is the impact of my engaging with this person on my fire of revival. If I pick up a habit and I'm doing something, I always check. Find this thing is good, but what effect does it have? The moment you realize that the fire of your revival has started to wane, and you do an assessment, realize, ah, it is ever since I started X, Y, Z, go back to the Lord and repent. Repent and cut it off. You find that as a single person, you start relating with a person, you go into a relationship with a person, and you find out that since you started that relationship, you can't pray, you can't read the Bible, your heart is tending towards sin, all those signs that are listed are beginning to manifest, go back to God and check with him that, Lord, is this the spouse that you have in mind for me? Because the effect that this person has on me is not good. So the best way to trigger the fire of revival is to trace your step back to whatever it is that compromised you. And you must be humble enough to say, enough is enough, I'm going to cut this off. Any entertainment that you decide to indulge in and you find that this thing is not helping me to grow, quickly deal with it. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. You know? So repent. The Bible says concerning David that when David went to war, and by the time he came back, the Amalekites had taken his wife and children and all their possessions, as well as those of his men. He said David was, the fire of revival and David just went out. He said it was, it was there sad, you know, and depressed, and even the men talked about stoning him. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. One of the ways you need to stir up the fire of revival, you must get out of your rut and rise up. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Stir yourself up. On Thursday, the fire of revival will burn in our midst in the name of Jesus. It's an opportunity for you to stir up yourself. You find that you don't want to come to church, you don't want to fellowship, you don't want to pray, you don't want to read the Bible, you just want to sin and sin and sin. You had better make a deliberate effort to stir yourself up in the Lord. Encourage yourself up uh, in, the, in the Lord. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Another way to trigger the fire of revival, sometimes you might need to find an accountability partner, somebody that you are accountable to, somebody that oversees your life, somebody that can discern. You know, Pastor was saying the other day that uh, one of the people close to him, the, the person came into his office and he discerned there was something wrong. So he, he sat her down and started saying, this, this, this is mostly. And the woman said, yes, pastor, this, that's what I'm experiencing. And he prayed with her, and she did not compromise her faith. Because somebody was put her under pressure to compromise her faith in order to get a job. And it was discerned by the spirit because she was accountable because she was accountable to someone. If she had not been accountable, she was one of those people that feel, oh, I don't need anybody. I just need online service. I don't need to engage. And person is not accountable. When you are unaccountable, you are exposed to the elements. The enemy can come in that isolated place and bombard the person with all sorts of thoughts and unrighteousness. If you want to trigger the fire of revival, seek for an accountability partner. There are many people that have come to me over the years and said, I want you to be my accountability partner. I want you to ask me questions. I want to be accountable to you. Your greatest accountability partner is your spouse. Your spouse is that person that will say, ah, you are not praying. You are not reading the Bible. 
you are beginning to get too lukewarm. And when you have an accountability, don't fight the person because God sends that person into your life to ensure that the fire river does not go out. Praise the name of the Lord. So you need to become accountable. And finally, how do you say of the fire of revival? You need to pray. If my people will humble themselves and pray, God says, I will hear them and I will heal their land. If you find out that the fire of revival is going, quickly go before the Lord in humility and pray that, Lord, help me. Stir up the fire within me. I'm, I don't want to come to church. I don't want to pray. I don't want to read the Bible. I don't like evangelizing. I don't like the things I should like as a believer. It's only those things that are wrong that my heart is tending towards. Lord, help me. God answers. And he answers in different ways. But if you find out that the fire of revival is going out, pray to the Lord. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Is there anybody here that is not a born-again Christian? You find that you are not born again. You just like to come to church, but you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't want, you know, to be accountable to him. God is saying this evening that it is time to be accountable. It is time to give your life to Christ and become a born-again Christian. So that the fire of revival can burn in your heart. So if you are here and you are not born again, just say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you in humility and I repent of my sins. Have mercy on me and forgive me. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Take over my life. I submit to you. I am born again. Thank you, Jesus. So if you pray that prayer, you can please raise up your hands. I will take your details and we'll pray with you. Let's rise up for some prayers. The Bible says that if my people are called by my name, we humble themselves and pray. I will hear them from heaven and I will heal their land. I want us to go before the Lord in humility and ask him for mercy and forgiveness. Begin to speak to him that, Lord, in any area where the fire of revival in my life has been compromised, Lord, I ask for mercy and forgiveness. In any way that my heart has been turning towards sin and I've lost my first love, Lord, in any way that I've forgotten your promises and I've forgotten who I am in Christ and my heart has been filled with fear for everything and anything, Lord, I come before you this evening in repentance. Lord, I repent and I ask for mercy and forgiveness for allowing the fire of revival to go out in any area of my life. Mantarado Sakalaba. Lord, I ask for mercy. Begin to pray for the new house, Parish Father, in any way that we might have been compromised, in any way that the fire of revival has not burned in our midst. Lord, we ask for mercy and forgiveness. Lord, we pray for Nigeria. In any way that we've allowed the fire of revival to go out, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, over this nation, over the church in Nigeria, over the church globally, over the entire world, Lord, we come before you this evening from asking for mercy and forgiveness. In any way that we've not allowed the fire of revival to burn. Lord, I humble myself before you this evening and ask for mercy and forgiveness, both for spiritual things and things that are not even spiritual, that there might have been a loss of fire. <clears throat> Lord, I ask for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let there be repentance in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for as many as have allowed the fire of love to go out of their marriages, as many as have allowed you know, the fire of commitment and loyalty and excellence to go out of their career and their business and are now losing money, losing credibility, losing excellence. Lord, in the workplace, 
losing money, Lord, in any way that will allow the fire to go out of our skills, Lord, of the work we do, Lord, of our business, our relationships, even the way we raise our children. Lord, in any way that we have been compromised, we come before you this evening and we ask for mercy and forgiveness. Now begin to repent before the Lord. He says, you have to be humble and repent. He says, I am with the person that has a contrite heart. Isaiah 57 verse 15 says, the high and the lofty one who lives in eternity. The holy one says, I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. It says, I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and revive the courage of those who are repentant in heart. Begin to go before the Lord now. I say, Lord, I repent. And I want you to mean what you say. Lord, I repent of anything that has caused the fire to go out. Lord, I repent. I will not continue in that path of prayerlessness, of carnality, of worldliness. Anything, Lord, that has taken out the fire of revival in my life. Lord, I repent tonight. And I say, I put an end to it. I stand before the congregation of the saints tonight. Lord, and I ask oh God for mercy and I make a commitment to humble myself this night and repent. To put an end to anything that the enemy has introduced into my life that has caused the fire to go out. The Bible says that while men slept, the enemy sowed tears. Lord, any tear in my life that's caused the fire of revival to go out, let your angels begin to gather the tears and begin to burn them. In the name of Jesus, any habit, any anything that I've engaged in that's caused the fire of revival to be compromised. Lord, I repent tonight and I cut it off. Lord, in Jesus, in Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse fourteen says, "Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, Second Corinthians seven fourteen, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land." Begin to speak to the Lord. Lord, restore me. Lord, let there be a revival. Let the fire of revival begin to burn. La Pora Sentelebo. Begin to pray for the crusade on the 2nd of December. Now begin to pray that, Lord, let your fire of revival be triggered through that crusade in the name of you. As many as have become lukewarm, as many whose love has grown cold and wanton, Lord, I pray use the crusade themed revive to revive the fire and the passion. In the name of Jesus, your that if we humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. You will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and restore our land. Lord, we pray this night, let there be a restoration as many marriages as have become cold and wanton without passion, without love. Father, Lord, let the fire be ignited tonight as we humble ourselves and pray as many whose career and business have become cold, lacking skill, lacking passion, lacking commitment and loyalty. Lord, I pray let there be a fire of excellence, a passion to do the work excellently in the name of Jesus. As many as have become careless with their business and are now losing money, losing customers, losing profit. Lord, let there be a fire, a fire of revival now in the name of Jesus. Satelebo Sakaya Parado Setelebo as many as have become careless in raising the children, as many as have become too careless with the children and have, have failed in parenting, Lord, let a fire and a passion and a love for the children be ignited in our hearts tonight that we may raise these children in the way of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Satelebo Sakayama. 
Lord, trigger the fire of revival in FC Yaba. Lord, trigger the fire of revival through our crusade in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Mantere so kalama paradoshe telebosa. Mikala redosen teleba. Begin to speak to the Lord that, Lord, I want to go back to my first love. Father, Lord, revive the first love, the passion that I have. Father, revive it in the name of Jesus. Lord, the passion that I have for coming into your presence. Lord, revive the passion that I had to study your word, to spend time worshiping you, rolling on the floor in tears. The, the passion that I had from you at the beginning. Lord, tonight, rekindle the fire. In the name of Jesus, Leterosika, begin to pray to the Lord. Lord, revive the first love, the first passion. In the name of Jesus, Father, Lord, in any way that I have missed it, whatever may have entered into my life that has taken away my first love, whatever distraction may have come that is now making me struggle to worship, making me struggle to praise, making me struggle to love the Lord with all my heart, with all my mind with all my soul Lord begin to remove any tear that the enemy has sown in my walk in the name of Jesus let the first love be revived in the name of Jesus and so shall it be in the name of Jesus let's pray for the crusade that anything that is resisting that revived crusade, that the Lord would take it out of the way. In the name of Jesus, whatever the enemy is setting up, whatever may be the strategy of darkness to come against the crusade, Lord, begin to remove it one by one. Rise up as a mighty man of war tonight. Gird yourself up and wet your sword and begin to cut in pieces every enemy, be it man, be it spirit, that is contained Tending with the revived crusade on the second of December at FC Yaba in the name of Jesus. Father, begin to slay them in the name of just everything that is standing as a resistance. Mikala Porato Satala. Lord, begin to cut it off now, now. In the name of Jesus, Sadola Parante Sekala Parabo. Lord, rise up as a mighty man of war. Rise up with your host of angels. Rise up as the captain of the host of the Lord. And Lord, go into battle tonight. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, rise up on your horse with your shield and with your sword and with your spear. And greet yourself as a mighty, terrible man of war. And begin to wage war against principalities, against powers, against against men, against spirits, against forces. Now, in the name of Jesus, anything that's trying to contend with the revival, Lord, consume with your fire that comes out of your mouth. In the name of Jesus, Sate Lebora Santala. Lord, let a flaming sword come out of your mouth tonight and begin to devour every enemy contending with the revival crusade at FC about the 2nd of December. In the name of Jesus, Lantela Mosakala, Mirado Shetelebo Sakama. No man shall be able to stand before us in Jesus' name. Finally, let's pray for angelic assistance. Lord, release your angels. Everyone that ministers on that day, let the angels of the Lord be there holding their shoulders, holding their hands placing the power of God upon each and everyone in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let us not lack angelic assistance. Let them be there to protect, to wage war, to minister. Your words are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will be heirs of salvation. Lord, we receive angelic assistance.